I am I'm joined by um, the brilliant Janet Bagnall. Janet, <laughs> say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. Good, good to be with you. For those people watching who haven't met you before or have joined us more recently and don't know much about you, tell us a bit about who you are and how you're involved in the life of Swan Bank. Okay. Um, so, Janet Bagnall, I'm actually a retired teacher and all those ridiculous things that you hear people saying about when I'm retired, I've got no time. That is true. I promise you that's true. Uh, I was in education. Um, I was an advisory teacher for special needs. Uh, and I've been to coming to Swan Bank for too many years to mention. <laughs> yeah. a, a little while, a little while. A, a little while, <laughs> shall we say, Sam. Since I was a teenager, I've been coming Great to Swan Bank. Great stuff. Yeah. Um, and you have recently taken on a new role within the life of the church. Is that is that's yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to tell yeah. us a bit about that? Yeah, right. OK, well, since, since becoming a Christian as a teenager, um, I really believe that you, you don't just attend a church. I really believe that part of part of your discipleship is that you serve, that you take on a role at church. That's what we were taught all those years ago. And I still believe that that's relevant. You know, you, we're not supposed to just be with our church family. We're not supposed to just worship. We're supposed to take on some type of service as well. Um, and I, I've really... I really believe that's true and it's something that's ingrained in me and over the years I've done so many different things and I, I can't even remember half of them I'm sure um, but over the last what 10 years uh, I was responsible for helping with safeguarding the safeguarding coordinator but over the last the last year just before lockdown really I really felt my heart going towards pastoral care and I suppose it links in with my special needs you know, yeah, teaching, yeah, um, my heart for people. Uh, and I've, I've been thinking about, well, how can we be sure at Swan Bank that we're caring for everybody? Because I, I believe that's what we should be doing. Mm. Um, and I think, that especially during lockdown, it's given me more and more time to think. And I, and I think the staff team have done amazing things dur during lockdown. Um, the, the number of you know, the times that I've heard that you, you've gone out and visited people and you've taken things to people and done shopping for people and, you know, brilliant. Um, but really, the staff team, it's a limited resource that we've got there. Um, and Swan Bank's got a, a lot of people. It's about 400 people on the membership, Sam. Yeah. yeah. yeah? yeah. Uh, and I'm thinking, Lord, how can we, as a church family, care for each other? What, how, how does that work at, for Swan Bank? What do you want to happen at Swan Bank? And I just had a picture of, of um, the disciples throwing the nets. And the, the disciples threw the nets up in the air. And the, the nets came down and covered the fish, covered all those fish. And I believe it's the same way with us. Our, our network will go up and it will cover the whole of the church membership and beyond. And, and I, I believe, I really believe that um, it's a network of care. And that network means that it isn't just one person or one small group of people looking after each other. It's a whole church looking after the whole church and beyond. Yeah. So network Love of that. care. That's yeah, that Do you want to share a bit about what, some of the practical outworkings of that network of care would would be for us in the life of the church. Right, okay, yeah. Um, well, we, we started by, obviously, Catherine and myself had loads of chats, and I know you you, you were joined yeah. in with loads of chats. Um, and we talked about getting a strategic team together, um, just a, a half a dozen people um, that could, could help with planning and thinking things through, uh, and, and seeing how this network would work, you know. And we, I know we, once we got that team, people, and the team does slowly grow as well. I don't think it'll grow much bigger, yeah. um, purely from a meetings point of view. Uh, but we, we, we're sort of getting together and planning, well, what will this network look like? And I think it was in the middle of lockdown, we put out a questionnaire to the church asking how can people get involved and a number of people did reply to that and it's brilliant and don't please don't think you've been forgotten we will be taking taking you up on your offers don't think you've been <laughs> forgotten oh, yeah. too valuable too valuable um but 
but we're now at that point where we're thinking, right, how, how can we build that network? And one, one, now that we can start engaging with people and we can start visiting people, we're thinking, right, OK, should we be building up a team of visitors, a team of people that are prepared to just spend a bit of time with someone else? OK, and, and that, that team, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that that's got that sort of two strands. One strand will be perhaps a team of people that will say, yeah, you know, I can spend an hour of, month, of a month. I can spend one hour in a month going and visiting someone that, that's perhaps at home that isn't able to get out. And I think, I think most of us really could spend an hour, you know, ju just going to, you know, we've got at the moment, I think we've got 37 people that are actually older people in the congregation that don't come out of the houses anymore. Um, and to just go and visit them for an hour, to go and go and have a chat with them, have a cuppa, you know, um, I think that would be really, it would show people that they're not on their own and that we do care for them. So that's one strand, um, that sort of the, the regular people. And then the other strand would be people that we'd be able to phone and say, oh, Sam's just gone into hospital and he's, he's you know, is there any chance you can just pop in and see, you know, or... Oh, Jan's, Jan's feeling a bit fed up at the minute. Can you just pop around and go and have a coffee with her? That type of thing. So you've got the, the regular, perhaps one hour a month, and then you've got the, the people that it'll be just like a one-off visit or possibly two or three visits, but it'll be a short-term thing. So that's where we're at. That's what we're doing. We're building that network and we're, we're hoping to build the, the, the visitors. That's what we're, we're on now. And there's all sorts of other things that have been going on as well, haven't there? You've got um, trying to start the walk and talk thing. Yeah. Um, you've been delivering, I know you've done some afternoon teas and stuff as well for people and yeah. all sorts of great yeah. stuff going on as well. Things, things that we've perhaps got going. We've, I mean, the staff team set up at the beginning of lockdown, the telephoning round, telephoning and keeping in touch with people. And, and I really hope, we hope that that will continue, that you'll, that team will continue to touch base might not be a telephone call, it might just be a chat at church, you know, it might be a Facebook message or whatever, but just touching base. So we've got that in place. Um, we've got a, a card ministry in place, and Worthington's doing a sterling job with that. Um, and Anna's sending cards that to perhaps people that are um, struggling at the minute, need a bit of encouragement, or going through a tough time, or a bereavement. So and, Anne's taken on board that, that role. And we've had so many people say, you know, how much it's meant to them to just have a postcard through the door or a card, you know, so that, that's firmly in place now. Um, we've taken shopping. We've got a, a number of people that do shopping on a regular basis to some of these people that are at home or to people that are um, through whatever circumstances are struggling at the minute. So we've got people that have gone and done some shopping for them. Um, we've got one lady, I won't name her, but she, she walks half an hour to go and knock on someone's door to say, are you OK? Wow. Is there anything that we is there anything I can do to help you? Do you need any shopping doing? I mean, does is that caring, Sam? Yeah, it's, it's lovely. Love it. it's, it's lovely. Um, what else have we? Oh, cream teas. We, we've done um, a couple now. Um, of times when, again, for, for people that we felt are either in the at-home group or people that we felt are perhaps struggling, at, excuse me, at the minute, we, we've um, got a couple of people, that Jane Sheeran, I've got to say, and, and Marge, they've been fabulous um, sorting out cream teas and just take, delivering cream teas. You see, and we, we've had to phone people from the church family and say, can you deliver these cream teas, please? And, you know, it's that network, it's that network go, reaching out and helping. And, and all of us, in a little way, can cover a lot of people, we can care for a lot of people. Last question, how can people support or get involved in this network of care? Really important one, Sam, um, joining the, uh, the team, the network. You can either, the normal one, get in touch with the church office, or if you go onto the Swan Bank website, you'll see that there'll be a link there. Um, and you can follow that link about joining the network of care. Please, please just prayerfully think, um, can I help? Can I spare an hour in the month to, to go and, and visit someone that perhaps 
can't get out of the house or someone that's going through a bad time. Okay, thank you. Great stuff. Thank you so much for chatting, Jan. It's been great to hear a bit about the network of care. Um, and please do, uh, if this is something that has perked your interest or you feel a bit of a, a ping from, from God to say, this is something I could get involved with, then please do uh, get in touch in the ways that Jan has mentioned. Thank you so much.